Hello, you two. This is episode two of Video Game Ventures, and today I'm playing a game called Game Dev Tycoon. Uh, this is obviously a simulator type game uh, where you build, you create video games. Uh, you start off as in a garage, okay? And you basically create video games and earn lots of money and eventually build your own large business out of it, uh, depending if you get that far, but that's another thing. Uh, anyway, it's an indie game. It is, it's not bad. I don't want to say it's very good. It's kind of, if you play, you'll understand, but it's pretty, it's kind of two-dimensional. There isn't that much depth to it. Um... And it can be very complicated for a lot of you guys. Uh, it's not the easiest game in the world to play. Uh, right now, I am cheating. Uh, there's no way, I mean, anyway, I have $7.4 billion here, so that's cheating. But, and, and this is the end of the game, but what I wanted to do was show you, I'll show you the beginning, and I want to show you where you can get, and this is exactly where you can get. Like I said, you start out in a garage with a single person which is just you of course and you eventually expand and create a large company with six other people working for you uh personally i really don't feel it goes anywhere it's kind of just the same thing over and over again and i would have hoped there was more to it uh it's pretty much all just text based i don't want to say text based but not exactly much going on here it's not a bad game. I've been bashing it. It's not a bad game. But it, I don't want to say it's a great game because I really don't feel like it is. Uh, it's something you might want to play a couple times. You might enjoy it if you're into these kinds of games and you like a big challenge. Because this game can be very challenging if you don't know what you're doing. And as you'll find out, I don't know what I'm doing. But it's definitely <laughs> something to play. O over here, uh, this is later in the game as you'll discover this, but... This is an MMORPG. Obviously, I named it World of Warcraft after the real game. Um, and over here, you'll see your cash display right here in the top right. Your fan count, which is just a number of people. Year count, that's what year, how many years your company's existed. Month count and week. Uh, every week, there will be sales figures that come in for whatever game you release. Uh, a lot of them get taken off the market earlier, but MMOs are the exception where they will last as long as you can afford to keep them running. As you can see, I've sold almost 200 million copies of World of Warcraft. Could you imagine if World of Warcraft had 200 million subscribers? Uh, anyway, basically I covered most of it, but let's start a new game. Yes, I have to give my company a name. I will name it... Hmm... Sablecraft. Player name, Malachi21, that is me. No, I don't want to review the tutorial. No. No. Now you start developing your first game. As I was saying, you start literally in your garage. I'm assuming this is the... That is a, uh, I want to say a DeLorean. I really want to say DeLorean. I don't know cars from the old times, older days, but this would be what I'd be expecting. It's an old style computer. Uh, it's clearly a rather uh, retro garage setting. And that's where you start. I don't know why the guy's computer's in his garage, but whatever. You have up here your bug count, which we'll get into when you develop video games but you have your bug count in the top left and if you know anything about games you'll know that bugs are just errors in uh, glitches and all that crap in the game that can be repaired uh, these are your design and technology points and this will be points will be allocated into this as you develop your games and you can become specified or rather trained in specific areas such as design and technology and you can when, when you get your company, you can have people for specific things. 
Whether you want a couple people working on design, a couple people working on technology, we'll get to that in a bit. Research points here, this is very important for research points. Uh, because if you don't have research points, then you won't be able to research new materials such as 3D games, new consoles, um, new features for games, all that stuff that you really need. It's very important to have a high number of research points. So let's start a new game. To start a new game, you click on the computer and hit develop new game. Uh, you have to name your game up here. Game concept, as you can see. Let's name this... Uh, uh, well, first of all, what's it going to be? It's going to be a military action on which platform? There's the G64 and the PC. I'm assuming this, the G64 is supposed to be referring to the Commodore 64. I don't know. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but at this point in time, the Commodore 64, the G64, whatever the hell that is, controls most of the market. It's more expensive, as you can see here. This is basically where you develop your game on. Which platform are you going to release it on? And every platform in this game has its quirks. Um, some, some platforms don't have games that are going to be successful on them. Like, you're not going to want... You're not going to want to create a strategy game on an Xbox, you know? And that's pretty much what this means. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, we're going to make this on the G64. As you can see, the market share is 57.2%. And at this point, this is the only time you're going to see the market share at such a high number. The market share for... There will be so many damn consoles out later in the game that you won't be able to get much market share on anything so this is a clear majority now since it's a military action game let's name it call of duty i hate call of duty by the way sorry 2d graphics we're gonna want 2d graphics you can select between the graphics setting of course and then you start development my bank account is in the red what the hell i must have fucked up <laughs> whatever Anyway, as you can see, a couple of things went one into technology, one into design, and one into bugs. And you'll see as this pans out what that really means. Now is where we decide, and this is very important, for each individual genre of your game that you select, you will have to know what someone that would be playing that game would be looking for, whether they want improvements in engine, gameplay, or story. Obviously, you're not going to want a maxed out engine on a... Uh, uh, a game like Mass Effect or an RPG, you're going to want story and quests up. But this is a military action game, so we're going to want to rig out the engine and the gameplay and drop the story and quests, because there isn't going to be much story. As you can see, some more points are going into research. Right here in the center is Industry News. Um, this will basically inform you on what the game, or what is going on in the game, what uh, new consoles are going out, how the consoles are doing, um, what games are most anticipated in the genre. It's very important to read, uh, read the industry news because if you don't read the industry news, you might get lost and lose money because something isn't profitable and you might have winged it and thought it was. Yeah, it might spell the end of competing hardware manufacturers. Well, that's just a joke. As you can see, more points are going into research, technology, design, and bugs. Uh, now, development stage two. There are three stages of development in a game. For development stage two, we have the option between dialogues, level design, and artificial intelligence. Being a military action game, we're going to have to decide what they would want in, in one of those games. So, what should we focus on? Um, obviously we're going to want to focus on, dialogues need to go, I mean this is, this isn't an RPG game, we're going to go for maxed out level design, and a decent emphasis on artificial intelligence. We're almost done with our game here, we're in development stage 3, and I'm actually running out of money. Um, world design, graphic, and sound for level 3. We're going to max out graphics, uh, improve the world design, and lower the sound a bit. 
We don't really need an importance in sound. Look, we have basic sounds. There's no point in wasting time on sound. World design we can go about halfway with. We have zero fans, as you can see right now. We're in the first year. So, we have time. Now, in this stage, the game will iron out the bugs. And you might want to let it sit for a little while until you see that no more bugs are coming up. Because you'll generate some more points in this process. And you don't want a game with bugs because you'll lose more money. So, when you're done with that, you hit... Oh, yes. Ninvento, Dinky Kong. Yeah, there are a lot of references to real games in here and real game consoles. And they're kind of bad, so just let that slide. They're all real game consoles. They just change the name a little bit. I don't know why. Here we go, finish. After this, you come up with this screen here. You get experience points for everything you do. And you'll get bonuses if you come up with a great combo uh, combo genre and platform, as well as, you know, action, simulation, um, and what kind of topic it is. If it's a good topic and genre combo, you'll get a bonus. As you can see, it's leveling up everything just a little bit. You have the option to trash the game or release the game. Uh, I suggest you release the first game you make no matter what, because you'll just lose money. Now, at this point, you will get reviews for your games coming in, and these reviews are what determines how much, honestly, really, is what determines how much money you're going to make. If you get a 10 on a game, uh, 10, you will be receiving loads of money, you'll get loads of fans, and you're in luck. I don't think you can get a 10 out of 10 as, as, with your first game. I don't know that as a fact, but I don't think you can. Needless to say... You'll get four reviews with different numbers, and you're going to want something, obviously, that's higher than four. Let's see what I get for Call of Duty. Yeah, this isn't too hot. Six. Shows potential. Well, Call of Duty sucks, so I hope it doesn't. Yeah, and you'll get these different random, shitty, really poorly done, just, it's pretty much just, it, it is this, these numbers here are composite of a lot of different factors and you can look up online all the different factors that go into those numbers it is a very complicated process and common reasoning might not necessarily grant you a winning game or winning this game for that matter because you can easily get wiped off the market in this game i don't think i really don't believe it's that easy after reviews come in after reviews come in, you will be receiving news on the game, which will just recap, you know, how it did. And then you'll start generating money and fans. Fans are very important. If you look in the top right here, it will show how many units of the game you are selling. And the more units you sell, the more fans you're going to get, and the more money you're going to receive. So, definitely try to release new games. Look up look up online what the hell you have to do. I've played many, many hours of this game. I'm not good at it at all. I'm sure a lot of people are a lot better than I am at it. But, still. As you can see, each one of these blocks is a week, by the way. I have received a record sale with 10,000 units sold. Okay, while you're developing a game... You might want to do research on new things, custom game engines, and new topics. Uh, this is just the basic you're going to get. Custom game engine, you're going to want to invest in that quickly because you will be creating custom game engines for many, many hours of the game. Custom game engines are very important for your uh, success in the, in the industry. You can't just use the same junk over and over again. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck with basic sounds and 2D graphics level 1. And you're going to want to get into 3D and all that all that crap. Uh, surround sound. There's just a lot to it. You know, you're going to want to research all that stuff. Um, as you can see here, I'm making a decent sum of money. Yes, Nevento has confirmed rumors and announced their plans to release TES. 
By the way, if you don't know, know that is a play to the NES, which is the Nintendo Entertainment System. Very popular console. Now, when you start your first one, you're going to want to develop another one. And you, this is where you're pretty much on your own. Um, you will want to make, repeatedly make, games that are going to be very smart in combination. So, let's go something basic here. Game number two, we'll call it Mass Effect Negative 5. Space, genre, RPG, platform, the G64. It still holds the market. 2D graphics again, seeing as it is a space RPG game, we're going to want the best graphics you're going to come with. Now here, now here we're going to want to change, uh, I'm sorry, someone's calling my house. Uh, excuse me for a moment. Apologize for that interruption. Anyway, we're back, and we were here at the development stage one for Mass Effect Negative Five. Now, for this one, uh, space RPG. Hmm. We're gonna want to rig up quests and story quite a bit. Um. Probably more than gameplay, I'd say. Engine is not that important. This is all just my personal thoughts. I could be completely wrong, by the way. And that's one of the experiments you're going to have with this game. Dialogue's very important. Mm. AI. I don't know. I don't really want to say it's that important. I think in level design is very important. Let's, let's, uh, let's do that. Uh, let's drop artifact. This is this could be a blunder. Well, who knows? Yeah. Then then it says Call of Duty off is off the market. It actually made a hundred thousand. That's a lot for your first game. All right. Stage three. World design. I really don't know here to be honest. Uh. RPG game. I don't really think we're going to focus too much on graphics. Let's focus on world design and a little bit more on s graphic. Yeah. World design should be maxed out. So, I don't know. I'm going to leave it like that. We're just going to wing it. Now, your third or fourth games can potentially bankrupt you, so be sure at least your first couple games are successful. Look up algorithms if you need to something that's gonna generate fans and make money and not be a shit game all right looks like we're ironed out for bugs here so let's hit finish yeah it didn't say great combo that's not good let's release the game see what comes up i'm not a bunny oh this game sucks Six? Oh, that's... Oh, boo! Bam, that's terrible. Bam. Alright, well, that is a blunder. Um, basically, the game will go on doing the same thing until you can upgrade yourself for a lot of things. Okay, here, you have contracting. You will get contracts. You can get marketing. Uh, there is a, a decent amount of content... Um, there could be a lot more, in my opinion. They do a decent job at holding the user involved in the game. But I don't really feel like there is enough substance to want to be playing this game a lot. Or definitely not replay it again, in my opinion. I don't really see the point. Um, anyway, I really I think this game's okay. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Um, my personal opinion. It's definitely worth playing at least once. But I don't really know if I should play it, or anybody should play it more than once, but whatever. I'm going to probably end the video there. So think about getting the game. Uh, just wanted to show, like, what, 20 minutes of footage or something. Uh, this was Malachi21 on Video Game Ventures. And I'm signing out.